Welcome to Art Matters. I'm Lynn Marsden Atlas, Executive Director and University Curator, the Arthur Russ Gallery. Today, we're going to focus on the exhibition Frankenthaler on Paper, which presents 10 unique paintings on paper and 17 prints that date from 1970 to 1983. During the 1960s and 1970s, several groundbreaking print workshops were established, while simultaneously artists and collectors had a renewed interest in contemporary printmaking. In 1961, Helen Frankenthaler produced her first lithograph, First Stone, 1961, with Titania Grossman at Universal Limited Art Editions, ULAE. Inspired by the process, she experimented constantly for more than five decades, working with master printers in the US and abroad, such as Tyler Graphics Limited, Crown Point Press, Mixografia, and two RC Edizione d'Arte. The 1970s were a time of remarkable change and growth for the artist. At 41, Helen Frankenthaler was one of a handful of women painters to achieve equal recognition to her abstract expressionist male colleagues. The success of her 1969 Whitney Museum retrospective, her exhibitions and sales at Andre Emmerich's gallery, and the publication of Barbara Rose's 1972 monograph on the artist brought her celebrity status and international acclaim. So it was with prolific energy and confidence that Frankenthaler experimented and greatly expanded the boundaries of her art during these decades. The solitude of her painting studio was paired with intense periods of collaborative work in new print workshops and with publishers. In 1972, Helen Frankenthaler began her first woodcut, experimenting in a new medium at ULAE. Using a jigsaw, Frankenthaler cut shapes out of mahogany blocks, and in the printing, she required each block to be registered separately. The print East and Beyond has a fluidity of outline and subtlety that are the hallmarks of her work, attributes that in the 20th century had not been sought or expected in the woodcut, Suzanne Borsch, scholar, declared. When the woodcut East and Beyond was printed in 1973, Helen Frankenthaler was not entirely happy with the registration of the orange block on several impressions of the print, and those were withheld from the final edition. But when she looked at them again in 1974, she realized that she could resolve the problem if she added by hand a small bit of cadmium orange crayon to the print it could solve the problem that she had initially. And so she released these 12 works as East and Beyond with Orange, the print that you see here. In 1982, Crown Point Press announced a woodcut program that would allow about six artists a year to travel to Japan to work with master printers in the ancient tradition of the Japanese Yukioi woodblock prints. Kathan Brown, the publisher of Crown Point Press, invited Helen Frankenthaler with others to be part of its woodcut project in Japan. So in 1982, she sent an acrylic and crayon on paper, untitled 1981, to master printer Tadashi Toda in Kyoto to serve as the model for a woodcut in the traditional Japanese manner. Frankenthaler rejected the woodcut proof that was initially sent to her, and in April 1983, she traveled to Japan to work directly with master woodcarver Raizo Monju and Toda to create the woodcut Cedar Hill, 1983. The serene beauty of this print, with its multicolored striations printed in water-based ink, belies the one-year process of this East-West collaboration. I don't always know what I want to achieve in a print, said Frankenthaler, until I see it growing along. This is why myriad proofs are necessary. As the print evolves, it tells you, 
You tell it. You have a conversation with a print. Frankenthaler worked with printers Walter and Eleonora Rossi of 2RC Edizione d'Arte for a second time during the spring of 1986 at their Broom Street, New York studio, rather than at their workshop in Rome. Diminutive in scale, Spring Veil, vale, which you can see at the entrance, with its luminous translucent layers of bright green, evokes a seasonal awakening. But here we see Sunshine After Rain from 1987, which he also produced during those two weeks. Its vertical composition is filled with the artist's mark making that includes playful circles and colorful lines. Her gestures feel joyous and free. In 1987, Kenneth Tyler, Tyler Graphics Limited, built a new facility in Mount Kisco, New York, that included a state-of-the-art press workshop and a custom paper mill. The new operation offered him the possibility to invite artists to produce more complex prints on a much larger scale. And it was here that Frankenthaler created her woodcut Freefall from 1993. The complexity of this woodcut is astonishing with its plate of 21 wood blocks, 13 plexiglass, and five mylar stencils. The magnum opus of artist and printer's creative collaboration, Freefall is immense, measuring over six and a half feet high. Thank you for joining me today for Art Matters. Tune in soon for our next episode and stay safe, stay inside, and stay well. Thanks.